dumb as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest on court. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real Yo. fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Real Fans Real Talk I'm Emerald Marie and as always I have my two favorite guys with me on Father's Day So you know I have to start with Eric first Happy Father's Day, Legends in Two Games Thank you for joining us, Trip Young What's going on? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm excited. I, you know, we got some good content to get out there today, some good discussions. I'm ready to go. Yes. Right. And definitely, again, uh, happy Father's Day to you, bro. Um, you definitely deserve it. I, I'm watching you raise two beautiful girls, so happy Father's Day to you. And uh, to all the other dads out there, and happy Father's Day to your dad as well. Yes. Make sure you let him know. Um, and just all the fathers out there, man, you know, y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Keep raising these 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 young boys to be men and these young girls to be women. Continue to help the, the moms out and y'all y'all do the best y'all can. Hey, yeah. I, want, I want to say something too before we get started. Uh, I know it is Father's Day, um, but I want to I make this very clear. It's not just about the fathers. It's about those who inspire and are there for the young uh, children and our next generation. I didn't have my father growing up, so I didn't know what that was like. Uh, but Trip, I've seen you with your nephews and your godchildren, mm -hmm. and I see you with your nieces and nephews. So I want you guys to know that even though it's Father's Day, your role is, is just as important in, in raising this next generation. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> thank you, Eric. And thank you for, you know, taking your time out today to even continue speaking, because um, this is definitely a, a day to be with your family. But y'all are family, so let's get started. So... Um, first, we're going to get started talking about NBA. So I'll let my favorite girl, Dag, Eric, uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on um, this week with the NBA. I know yeah. we were hoping they were coming back, but who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it looks like our excitement has to be uh, tapered down just a little bit. Um, right now, there has been a recent spike in the COVID cases in Florida. Um, as of yesterday, I haven't seen what it was today, but as of yesterday, they had set new daily records seven of the last 10 days. There are over 90,000 cases at this point. Uh, wow. The NBA is a little concerned about the, the spike in numbers. Um, obviously, they want the games to come back. And the whole idea of having this centralized NBA within Orlando uh, is, is a little frightening for a lot of guys. Because as we know, there are a lot of uh, fathers within the NBA and a lot of family members within the NBA who may not want to run that risk. Uh, so right now, the NBA is trying to figure out how to accommodate everybody and also keep track of these numbers as we approach. We're about four weeks away from the restart of the uh, NBA season. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's such a valid concern. I mean, I think COVID has kind of gotten lost, you know, in conversation, kind of uh, our, our attention quickly focused to protesting and the Black Lives Matter movement, which I'm in full support of, but there's still some major health risk and issues out here. Obviously, you know, stores are not even allowing you to enter without a mask. So I do think it is the right thing for the NBA and just for all of us to reconsider reopening certain things. Um, but especially with NBA season, um, you know, it's not just the players playing, it's the fans in the stadium, it's um, the close quarters that athletes are in. So, I mean, even though I would love for NBA to be back soon, um, I just hope that they're extra precautious um in deciding whether or not they want to return i mean it, it just sucks that they were everything was like moving smoothly 
but then the, the state itself, you know what I'm saying, saw a, a huge spike in the numbers. Right. Um, now, they will be in, you know, the, the NBA bubble, which, you know what I'm saying, obviously that's going to be a, a huge advantage for them as long as you don't leave that bubble. Um, and they're going to be, you know, they'll, they'll have the testing every day going on, and I'm sure they're going to test everyone before even entering the, the, the bubble. Um, so, you know, hopefully they can still continue and, and manage to put the rest of, of the season on. But if it gets if it's too crazy, then honestly, it's, it's not even worth it. Yeah. And what's interesting about this, you know, debate on whether or not they're going to postpone. Just last week on the show, we had a discussion about Kyrie Irving, who basically said, listen, I don't really think that we should start the season back up. I think we should continue to push to push the issue of Black Lives um, Matter, that they matter, and just continue the discussion in America about Black Lives. So it's kind of ironic that this week now we're like, hey, we might have to still push this back because of COVID. Um, and, you know, I kind of want to dive in deeper with, with those comments that Kyrie said, because now Kendrick Perkins went on air and basically stated that, you know, he felt like Listen, you know, Kay, Kyrie's my brother and everything, but I think that it was foolish. Um, he did not agree with his statements at all. Um, and that resulted, uh, well, let me just back up. His statement that he said about Kyrie was that he was confused and he's showing lack of leadership. So that's heavy to, to, to sit on air and say that about your brother and about your other, you know, NBA counterpart. And so that resulted in, KD calling Kendrick Perkins a sellout. And even that, you know, in our community, calling someone a sellout, calling them a coon, calling them things like that, that's a serious, you know, that's serious. So, um, you know, Kendrick Perkins definitely responded saying, you know, Katie's my brother. There's been times that he and I have been in the locker room crying together. And we were both fighting this issue of, you know, African American equality. Um, but I just don't agree with Kyrie's statement. Um, you know, I think for him to sit on air and, and call him foolish and lack leadership, I didn't like that comment and I can see why KD didn't like it. Um, but what are your guys' thoughts on kind of that back and forth? I'm, let me, I'm going to go first, Eric, because I know you want to go in. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with, I'm with, uh, Kendrick Perkins on this, Perkins. Um. I agree with him. You know, I when 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 Kyrie made those comments, I don't think that he had a plan mapped out. I just think, you know, he was speaking off of his emotion of not getting an invite um, you know, to the to the bubble. And, you know, he kind of took that and was like, you know what, nah, let me if I they don't want me to go, let me let me throw a wrench in, in everybody's game type of situation. Um, because, you know, personally, like I know I've I've seen, you know, Kyrie, would, you know, say rest in peace and, and different things like that. But honestly, I haven't heard too many stories about Kyrie being on the front lines. And I don't even mean protesting. I mean just like, you know, you see the things that, that guys like, like LeBron do off the, off the court. I don't hear too many things like that about Kyrie. And that's not to say he doesn't have those things going on. But, you know what I'm saying, I just don't – I haven't really heard too much about it. So I'm with Perk, and then as far as the whole sellout thing goes, that, that's kind of crazy in itself. Like you said, M, that's one of the top insults that you can pretty, you know, that you can throw at a, at a black person that's calling them a sellout. And I really love the way Kendrick Perkins handled it. Yeah. Uh, you know, he came on television, he spoke to to Kevin Durant like a man, um, mm -hmm. in public because you called him a sell, sellout in public. Um, right. but it's the same sellout that had you in his home with his wife and with his children. Um, so, you know, my thing with that is even if, if you really did feel that way, that's a conversation that as brothers, we need to have on the, on the phone, not you tweeting out that I'm a sellout or not you saying that in, in the, to the, to the public that I'm a sellout. If that's how you really feel. You know what I'm saying? We could talk about that as men because I get so, you know, disappointed when we go at each other in public like that. It just, you know, it just shows that divisiveness that we don't really need, especially not right now. Yeah, um, Trip, you're right. And uh, I want to start off by commending Perkins and the way he handled it. Um, I haven't always agreed with Kendrick Perkins' opinion or point of view on a lot of sports topics. But mm -hmm. on this one, I think he's correct. And he handled it with class. Uh, I'm sure he was very angry. 
uh, and very hurt by the things that Kevin Durant said to him. Because as he highlighted, Kevin Durant had been in his home and Perkins' wife had cooked dinner for them before. And um. Perkins, Perkins' kids looked at Kevin Durant almost like an uncle. So to say I'm, I'm a sellout, like, bro, it's as simple as you picking up the phone and we could just hash this out. Um, but the reason I agree with Perk, and as Anthony already highlighted, you know, in this type of environment and, and what's going on right now with the Black Lives Matter movement, mm-hmm. um, division is the worst thing that could happen. The moment yeah. the outsiders see that there's division amongst us, they will pick at that scab. And mm-hmm. so the, the best thing Kevin Durant could have done is say, look, let me just get Perk on the phones and say, look, Perk, I don't agree with what you said. You shouldn't use your platform that way. We could talk about this behind the scenes. But to call him a sellout and to, you know, kind of chastise him and, and on social media that way mm-hmm. was the worst thing that Kevin Durant could have done. And I'm, I'm truly disappointed in Kevin Durant um, because I'm, I'm going to be honest, as a sports fan, I think Kevin Durant is a beast. You know, yeah. don't get me wrong. I, I don't want people to confuse the two. He is a monster. As a Knicks fan, I wanted Kevin Durant to come to the Knicks. Um, but the childish behavior we continue to see from Kevin Durant shows us that he is not the leader that he thinks he is. Um, he constantly is, is back and forth with tweets with people. He constantly takes offense anytime someone doesn't see his point of view. He's almost like a bratty child that now has become a bratty adult. Mm-hmm. And at some point, he's got to realize that he's doing more harm to the movement than good. Mm -hmm. I get Kyrie's point of view. And I said this last week, I agree with Kyrie. You don't want to distract from the narrative and you don't want to take attention away from the black lives matter movement, but Mm -hmm. telling players they shouldn't go play. Isn't the right way to go about it because there are a lot of guys who need this paycheck. There are a lot of guys who need to support their family off being able to play basketball. And so when you're sitting in your mansion and you got a hundred million dollars secure and you know, you can't go to Orlando because let's not get it confused. Kyrie can't even go to Orlando because he's not playing. So it's easy for him to say, oh, we, nobody should go. Yeah. And for Kevin Durant to try to call somebody else a sellout for saying, oh, Kyrie doesn't have the plan in place yet. That's wrong, uh, uh, Kevin Durant. You got to be a bigger leader in this moment right now. So you, you both made excellent points. And this, it's something that I didn't think about until really, Eric, you kind of went, you went, really went in about the plan, right? So at first, when I had seen the comment that Kendrick Perkins said, I kind of like, I didn't like it because I, I, my mind went to where, what you just said about showing division and showing it, but also showing it and speaking it on a public forum. I feel like in this time, unity, black unity, and, and just for our faces to be on one accord is very important. I did end up seeing the actual full quote of Kendrick Perkins, which actually um, this is why I hate with media. Sometimes you see, you read stuff out of context, you know, you see that little paragraph. So for me, I saw the comment of your, the confusion and lacking leadership. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that because I did agree with Kyrie saying, no, let's continue to focus on African-American issues. And I'm all for that. But you know, the way that our ancestors were able to really rally together back in the day with civil rights movement and all of these things, you know, even Harriet Tubman with the Underground Railroad, it was through organization and proper planning that we were able to execute boycotts. We were able to execute sit-ins, you know, escape, all these things, it's through organization. So I understand Kendrick Perkins' full, like, yo, we have to have a plan. Um, and the actual full quote, just so we have it, was um, on Kyrie Irving, right now, you are the distraction. You are the distractor. It's crazy to me because you come out and you do something simple without talking to President Chris Paul or consoling with Michael Roberts. Let's sit out without a plan. It makes zero sense, and I totally disagree. So when I when I seen that full quote, I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. You know, because it is kind of like just sit out. Like if anything, they have more power when they are in the limelight and have the capital and the and the money to make moves because this is chess, not check. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. kind of where they have to look at it. So I think, you know, um, as far as KD's comments, it, it's definitely unfortunate because I always think that he's super, I, I would hope that he would take the high road because I am a big fan of him on and off the court. I think he's always been a class act, I feel. So I, the lately, the tweeting and just kind of the, the childish things, um, we don't like to see this from KD at all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just, I pray, I pray that these guys kind of are able to talk this off, talk this out off camera and really continue to put the pressing issue first. 
Yeah, and even um, with to, just to add on to what you were saying about the communication, you know, one, yeah, you didn't obviously you didn't have this conversation with Chris Paul, the president of the Players Association. I mean, one, because you already know that Chris Paul has been vocal about wanting to play anyway. But that communication goes even further because I could understand if you had a conversation with Adam Silver and and you know maybe the owners or whatever like that, and they and they kind of like just shut you down for what you were trying to do. But you have you didn't even reach out to anybody. You were just trying to rally up the troops to say, oh, we we shouldn't play. And Adam Silver and we speak about this all the time. You know, shout out to Adam Silver because he's he's very on point with supporting the players whenever they want to speak out him saying the right thing and you know at, at, at pivotal times um throughout the you know just throughout everything that's that's been going on so if you had went to him and he shut you down okay that's one thing i'll give you that but that's not even the case you didn't even go to him you didn't even see you didn't have no ideas of okay if players would like to play what can the nba do to to help with the movement and everything that we're going on. And, and again, Eric, I commend you because you had some great ideas um, a couple of weeks ago in regards to things that the NBA could do while the players are there. Because again, like you said, they do have a lot more power when they're on camera because you got to think as soon as the NBA comes back, everybody's going to be locked in. So that means you got millions upon millions of eyes on the NBA because they want us, they need something to grasp onto. That's one of the reasons why the last dance did what it did because there was literally nothing else on. So now you bring the NBA back, getting ready to go into the playoffs. We've missed all of that. This is your prime opportunity to now work with the NBA to put out, you know, the same way like the NFL, the players had that statement that they put out. Now you can be doing, you know, things like that. So, you, you know, you got that opportunity. But he didn't, have, he didn't have that conversation, which is why I just feel like with him, it's coming from a different place. He's coming from a place where, oh, I wasn't going to be able to go. So now let me throw a wrench in the game for everybody else. Right. And, and that's why I said I, I don't – his message is correct. And I don't want anybody, anybody to misinterpret what we're saying. We agree right. with Kyrie Irving. This is the time to take advantage of the platform and, and people's attention. But when you just kind of just throwing something out there and then hoping everybody follows, that's not the way to go about it. Um, and the NBA has recently released a commercial with ESPN um, where they say it's, it's bigger than basketball. It's bigger than just a moment. And we also got to remember, and I want to shout out uh, uh, Stephen Jackson and Matt Barnes because uh, I love their podcast, All, uh, All the Smoke, and, and the things they're talking about. And they, they, they're kind of on different sides, at, opinion-wise, on Kyrie's um, uh, thoughts on, on what the NBA should do. But I want to shout them guys out because – Matt Barnes was on the Clipper team back in 2014 when the whole Donald Sterling saga happened. And mm -hmm. he has said himself, we didn't know what to do because we didn't have somebody driving a decision for us. We didn't know whether we should boycott the game. We didn't know if we should just quit the whole rest of the season. We didn't know what to do. So the only thing they could come up with was we're going we're gonna to go to center court. We're going to drop the, um, the warm-up uniforms there. And we're going to kind of do a silent boycott and protest. And – but he said himself, had we had some direction, we probably would have sat out the rest of the playoffs. And we would have we made the NBA make a choice as to whether they're going to make us forfeit these games or they're going to really attack the situation. Adam Silver, I think, as a commissioner, has always done a great job of addressing issues head on at the moment. He hasn't right. let them linger. And that's why I think the NBA is on the heels of the NFL has taken over as the premier sport in America. Because we see these things. We see the NBA is willing to address these topics. And I think this is one of those moments, as Matt Barnes is referencing from 2014, that we didn't have the direction then. But if you put the right direction now and the right leadership now, you could be way more powerful in addressing mm -hmm. these topics and make sure that these topics just don't fall by the wayside. So, mm -hmm. Kyrie, again, we're not disagreeing with you, but it's got to be with leadership. You just can't tell guys don't go. And then it's like, all right, so now what? So we don't go. And then what? We just sit home. And, right. and, and, and what else we do after that? And you lose your power when you're not in the limelight. You lose your power when you're not financially capable to invest in things and, and really make real changes. So I, I completely agree. And I think um, back to your comment of why the NBA was, is kind of a leading premier franchise or, or sport over NFL. It is reasons like that, you know, for sure. And I think this is the time right now for companies and organizations to really rise to the occasion. And I think that 
it is important to keep this race, you know, racism topic just alive and well, because even with the NFL, I mean, we could really sit here and look at the lack of black quarterbacks and that whole stereotype and that, and that whole issue that really needs to be at the forefront. Like that, that's something that they've had a break for a long time of really not addressing that. Right. And the lack of black, you know, leadership and owners. So, um, kind of moving, kind of continuing the conversation with NFL and NBA. Um, a lot of NBA players had a lot of comments and were very critical um, of our President Trump's recent rally in Tulsa. So um, during this rally in Tulsa, President Trump basically had a direct message to the NFL and Roger Goodell. He started off with the rally basically saying that he's, in, you know, he's always liked the NFL. He's always liked Roger Goodell. However, he did not like his PSA that he that he released 15 days ago, where he was basically saying that we had it all wrong. We should have listened to our players, our staff, those who took a knee. Um, so Trump, you know, continued to do what most people who disagree with the peace for protest um, do is when they basically redirect the attention of, oh, I will never support something that disrespects the flag, right? Um, and so he just continued to say, you know, look at, look at the, the way we boycotted last year. You know, do they want that again? Look how long it, it took the numbers to come back up. But to Tripp's point, like he said earlier, little did he know, a lot of us were boycotting the NFL because we felt like the NFL were not supporting Kaepernick. So I don't even understand how he's trying to take credit for that. Um, but we will have, we will boycott it again if we need, if need be. Right. So um, yeah, it was just, it was just insane, extremely tone deaf. And what I didn't like was there was a specific part in his rally where he said um, he didn't understand why Roger Goodell even brought it up. No one asked him or no one, it didn't make sense. Like we almost like, where this come from and that to me was crazy when he said that do you guys remember that particular part because it was like are you not looking outside seeing what's going on in the world yeah. that he would bring this up like what do you mean why like he had to address it because of the climate um and, and let's, and let's be clear goodell does not make a statement like that if the if he hasn't spoken to, to the owners at least uh, about doing it now maybe not exactly what he was going to say but i know he spoke with the owners before making that kind of a statement yeah. and the pressure was on due to that commercial that was released with nfl players all speaking up about the issue and yeah. so that's in in that commercial the fact that really that commercial led to um this issue not being ignored and like hey my players are all speaking up for this is the reason why our comments earlier about KD and, and Perkins and Kyrie, you need, you need unity, you know, like instead of you guys are on, there's headlines right now with you being a sellout and you being lacking the leadership and all this nonsense when the NFL, at least I can say the players are like, look, let's just make this and release this and all come out together. So the unity part of it is what's going to put the pressure on people like, the NFL commissioner is going to put pressure on people like the owners in order, you know, to, to continue the conversation and make PSAs like they did. Yeah. I mean, um, Tripp and I have had, we may have had to talk on air before as well, but I know we definitely have had it off air and we've always wondered like, what's, what's the highest level of player? What's the highest caliber player you can get to co-sign the movement before the NFL has to take notice. Right. Mm -hmm. So once Patrick Mahomes jumps on that commercial, the NFL has to release a statement because Patrick Mahomes is the current face and the future of the NFL. Yeah. And so if he's out there on a limb on his own and the NFL doesn't support it, it's a black eye for the, or for the league, for every organization that you allowed your superstar, your young superstar to go out there on a limb and speak up for the movement and you guys weren't at least willing to support and at least yeah. back him up. So that's yeah. that part of it. And as you mentioned, that's the difference between the division that we're seeing amongst current players in the NBA as, as opposed to the solidarity that we're seeing from right. the NFL players. Right. Um, I also commend Malcolm Jenkins. Uh, I've said this on air as well. I think the work he's doing is great. And he was recently hired as a correspondent for CNN. And he's been one of the guys leading a coalition that's been going into the, to the league office down in New York 
and speaking to the league about, look, there needs to be some sort of change. There needs to be some sort of support from you guys. Um, Malcolm Jenkins was a guy who immediately jumped on his Instagram and, you know, he, he went at Drew Brees for the comments he made for not being yeah. a part of the movement as well. But in regards to our, our so-called president, uh, you know, he loves to take credit for things he has no part of. He is oblivious to everything that's going on. For him to say, I don't know, nobody asked Roger Goodell. No, everybody asked Roger Goodell. Right. And, and we all needed to hear from Roger Goodell uh, in regards to what the league was going to do because we know uh, a large portion of the league is black. And if he's not going to support his players, then why should we as a consumer should support his league? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't say anything better than that. Like this is what he does. He, he continues to be divisive. And you know, that's the, that's the, the best way to do it is to jump up emotion by keep going back to the, the, the notion that it's about the flag. It's about the anthem we're disrespecting when, I mean, clearly at this point, if you didn't know before, you know, people are, are actually starting to get it. I mean, not that I don't, I don't think that he, you know, he knew before what it what it meant, but he you know he got he got to do that to spike his uh, voters. You know, you get the his voters back on our side. Now we need to bring you back in office because we can't have you have you um these guys out here disrespecting our flag and disrespecting our country and and whatnot. So you know that's what that's the typical uh, Donald Trump tactics. Um, and you know, he's going to continue to do that. And, 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 and so he gets, uh, if hopefully he doesn't, but it, until the, up until election day, you know what I'm saying? He's going to continue to, to, to push that, that narrative, you know, which the whole thing with him, cause, cause again, the, the protest was originally supposed to be on Juneteenth, you know, so let's not forget about that. You know, yeah. so we, we know where his mindset is at. Like you, you want to have your, have your, your, your your party, your, whatever you want to call it, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying, on Juneteenth, on the, on the day one, that represents, supposed to represent the end of slavery, and two, in Tulsa, where Black Wall Street uh, took place, and hundreds of thousands of, of, of African Americans, thriving African Americans, were slaughtered, had all their property destroyed. Uh, I think they said it was about $100 million worth of damage, um, you know, not, any, not including the lives that were lost during the uh the, the, this whole massacre um and that's the day that you choose to have your your rally you know what i mean so we know where your, where your mindset is at and you know it's just another thing for you to you to have people picking sides with and if you're a person that you know can easily be triggered and i can fool you into believing that the protest is about one thing when clearly this man and several hundred other people have said it's not about that and clearly he went to a, a Green Beret and asked him what would be the most respectful way to protest. And he got mm-hmm. kneeling from <laughs> that Green Beret. Like, I don't, it just, for me, it doesn't get any clearer than that. Yeah. You know, but you're going to continue to push the narrative that you want because, you know, you want, you need to get your voters riled up and for them right. to get their friends riled up. And, it, and it's, it's the, it's the epitome of ignoring the issues to continue it. It is mind boggling that we still have to remind some people that this is not about disrespecting the flag. The flag's crazy. It, it, when, sorry. No, no, I, 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 it, it is. It's frustrating it because Kaepernick has said it. Uh, there are white former military members who have said this is not disrespecting the flag. As Anthony highlighted, Kaepernick went to a Green Beret and asked them, what is the most respectful way that I can protest without disrespecting our armed forces. And he was told, if you take a knee, because in, in a lot of cultures, taking a knee is a sign of respect. Yeah. And yet there are still some people who, they will completely overlook the issue that is being protested and say, but you're disrespecting the flag. Right. So as we continue the conversation with the statues and monuments across the world being torn down by protesters or finally being taken down, properly from organizations that put them in place. So moving to the MLB, recently the Minnesota Twins removed a statue of their former owner, Calvin Griffith. So he was known for being just a overt racist. Uh, The Minnesota Twins expressed just their apology of um, just ever, you know, putting him up in the first place. Um, I read that they were just disgusted. Like, I don't understand how we were even honoring this man. He's made just disgusting comments about the black community. He had a great disregard for them, did not think they were equal and, and just 
spoke about them in a disgusting way and we really missed the mark forever spending the money to put up his uh, monument. So, I mean, I love to see statements like that. It's going to take things like this, idols and statues to be removed to really speak to the nature of our racism um, in our country right now. Um, in addition, moving back towards the NFL, the Washington Redskins also removed a monument of a former owner who was extremely racist. And his name was George Preston Marshall. And, you know, same situation. The Redskins just released a statement saying, we really missed the mark. You know, everyone's missing the mark <laughs> years later um, of really understanding that these people, you know, having these images is horrible. But I am happy that they are being removed. Um, and they just continue to make a statement that this was a symbol of a person who didn't believe all men and women uh, were created equal and who actually worked against integration. Um, it's counter to all that we as a people and city and nation represent. Um, removing the statue is a small and overdue step on the road of lasting equality and justice. Um, CNN has also reached out to the Washington Redskins, basically asking about the criticism they've received over the years for the symbol. Um, you know, of, of Native American groups who, and others that have been continuing seeing the Redskins name and symbol as an issue. Uh, so I'm, I'm really curious to see what happens with that because I know that's been an ongoing issue for years. The, the funny thing is, uh, so the, the Redskins uh, owner who the statue was um, built in his uh, image, he actually had it put in the contract when he sold the team that the statue had to stay up at the stadium, which was crazy to me because, you know what I'm saying, like, if I pay my money for this, I'll do whatever the hell I want to do. I don't give a damn much of your statue, even though, you know, whether I respect you or not, but if I want to move your statue, I, I bought this. It's mine. I own this. I can do whatever the hell I want. I'm not about to be held to, you know what I'm saying, to, to that if I'm paying you millions of dollars for this organization. But, and um, go ahead, then. What's scary about that, though, I just had to jump in, is the fact that that's our nation's capital. Yeah. Like, just think about all that that represents, like our nation's capital, like the like DC, the team that's tied with that has a monument of 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 a racist man, and and that's the sport. You know what I mean? So it just yeah, makes you think you, we haven't had racist men living in that that White House. <laughs> of course we did. I mean, the slaves built the White House, but it's just the fact that it's like the fact that people think saying Black Lives Matter or, or standing up, you know, for Black and Brown faces is like unpatriotic or not American just shows you how much we tie in racism and, and um, America, how like it's, it's so parallel. And so it's disgusting to think that this is Washington DC, the home of, you know, our nation, the capital of it. And we're just now removing racist images. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, like I said, the, the, there have been several gentlemen in the white house yeah. You know, that uh, have been racist or that have owned slaves or that have made comments or that have been sexist or that have been, you know, there's so many different things going on in that book. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, I'm glad they, they, they did remove the statue. I'm glad, you know, there's a lot of statues coming down across the country. Uh, and you actually, you put it best uh, last week, you know, when you made the analogy to, you know, would you put a Hitler statue and expect a bunch of Jewish people to be walking around it and every day, oh, hey, that's, that's the guy that was burning us and killing us and, and, and raping and, you know, doing all this stuff. Well, you know, y'all put, yeah, that's it. Look, now y'all walk around that statue. You put his name on the front of your schools or right in front of the synagogue, we'll put it's Hitler. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I, that doesn't, again, it doesn't surprise me, but I'm glad they are starting to take those statues down. I know my son had posted up another one. That was just horrible. Uh, Abraham Lincoln statue. Petting a grown ass black man. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and 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 he's and he freed the slaves. So you know what I'm saying like that's what we got from the guy that that, that freed the slaves. So I mean, free freeing the slaves. You know, I mean, I, I guess we could say that, but there's a lot more that goes into that. You yeah, know? you know, you know, but. Uh, you, you can't truly free somebody when you release them into to the world that he released them into. Um, but in terms of what you said, Em, I mean, bringing out a statue of a racist man in our nation's capital mm -hmm. that has housed many racist men um, with a team that has the name 
or the nickname of a derogatory term towards Native Americans. I mean, what's the irony in that? You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> um, it's the first step, though. And and I, I want to say this, that, you know, we, we applaud those steps. We need to see more, though. But mm-hmm. at least it's a start. And let's take down the statues. Let's change these names because you know, we know that the name of that Washington football team is a derogatory term. So right. let's see the change of that. And then let's continue to see change, you know, well, because he wasn't the school books too. Change yeah, those school books. Right. We we know that the American history needs to be taught the right way. It's not mm-hmm. just white history if we're gonna say it's American history. Um, mm-hmm. but let's let's also look back and, and let's kind of wash out the names of all these racist owners because he wasn't the only one. Um, mm-hmm. you know, there were a lot of football, basketball, baseball owners who were racist. Yeah. And, you know, until we start to see that kind of get washed out and, and the history taught correctly, that's that's really progress. But this is a start and we'll take yeah. it from there. Yeah. And I'm definitely going to send you some footage. Um, I know I told you guys last week that we protested in Babylon Village. Well, we had another protest. My sister led and said some powerful words uh, in front of the Robert Moses statue just yesterday. And I loved what she said about it because she um, basically spoke about how I didn't realize how much Robert Moses affected the Bronx. And there's a documentary you guys should definitely watch about Robert Moses. It was a PBS special where it showed life in the Bronx before and after Robert Moses and just the unity between black and brown owned businesses and just the movement and the liveliness. Um, quickly changed because of the way he built the bridges and the tunnels and all of those things to set to separate. And I didn't understand. I didn't know that it affected beyond Long Island, that New York City and pe- and that's why there's such a people make coming to Long Island such a big deal in the city. Where in the past, it's like we weren't meant to be this divided. I think. I think it's going to Long Island should just be a regular thing to people, uh, but making it easy to get there also affects you know, the community coming out. So the, this divide that the Long Islanders have versus New York City is not on accident. Um, so I definitely will, will get some of those uh, clips in so people can see what she had to say. And I do think that these statues should not be um, removed and just disappearing. My sister had made a great point, a great solution. They should be in museums. I just think that these spaces, if they're gonna be put in museums, needs to have accurate descriptions of how they contributed to America. So go ahead and take, you know, Calvin Griffith and put him in a museum. But make sure, yes, he did all these things to establish a team, but he also did all these things to dismantle unity and black and brown faces. So just have those descriptions parallel. So then we, okay, we know, you know what I mean? I don't think they should just be taken away and disappeared, but people need to have an accurate description. Yeah, that, that's a, a great idea, you know, like show the good with the bad. Like mm-hmm. he didn't just do all of these good things here. He did some bad things that, that we got to speak about too. And, that, and that's the reason why Kaepernick still got a nil in 2017. Yeah, right. that's the reason why Emma Marie still got an organized protest in Babylon in 2020. You know, because y'all not showing the, the, the complete history. You can't... Mm-hmm. You, this country, you you can't you can't show the, the good without showing the bad yeah. that came yeah. along with that. But let's be clear for those who are even confused, and I know we stayed on this topic for a while. If OJ Simpson, God forbid, left this earth soon, they white folks would not allow us to forget this trial and the case that happened during his lifetime. And so to me, it's like, yes, he contributed so much to football. But if there was a statue of OJ, there would be a sign, uh, you know, he was convicted and da 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 and accused. Like that whole, because look how quickly, I mean, I hate to even bring this up, but Kobe wasn't even gone a whole 24 hours and people wanted to bring up his, his, his case that he got acquitted for, right? So let's just keep that energy. And when these white faces die, let's, let's have accurate descriptions of things they were uh, charged for, things that they did. And that's fine, but like, okay, we're gonna talk about OJ, let's talk about his great football, but let's also great talk about his case. Cool, just keep it consistent. So that's kind of what my sentiments are on, on these. Yeah, these OJ was not guilty though. So that's, no, 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 but. I, right, but it's still. Yeah, you got, you but it's a, the M, M, that's a, uh, an amazing point, and you're right. You're absolutely 1000% correct. If we wanna tell the history, tell the totality of it. 
So the same way that, like you said, the moment Kobe passed, they made sure that we remembered he was accused of a rape. Yep. And, uh, you know, when OJ passes at some point, they're going to remind us that yep. he was accused. Whether he was acquitted or not, doesn't matter. He was accused. So the same thing. Let's continue that same pattern all across the board. Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> right. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to put Aaron Hernandez in that same boat, (laughs) but but you're right. You're right. But I'm just saying, the reason I don't want to put him in that same boat is because, again, Aaron Hernandez didn't have the the resume that Kobe Bryant had. Right, 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 right. And then, or or, um, OJ. Right, right. There there was a lot of things OJ did before he was an accused murderer. So, um, you know, I agree with you. We're going to tell the history. Let's tell it all the way through. Let's not sweep under the rug the things that aren't as pretty to look at just because, hey, this might tarnish the legacy because we don't, we don't take that same, um, we don't use that same filter when we're talking about black lives after they're gone. So the problem, the problem one of the main problems is, is, though, is most of these white dudes have died, you know, been long gone for a while. So it's not like, you know, let's, let's just say on the, of the uh of, of the sons or whatever, I mean at this point it's like he he he's already gone. You know what I'm saying? So are we gonna really talk about some guys? Are they gonna see about guys that was doing their dirt fifty years ago, sixty? You know what I'm saying? 60 Why not? Years ago. Why not? No, I I think yes. they should. But I'm just saying. But I'm saying they these guys like that are already dead. So I like, said so, so anybody because that was like, we we I I I know I know what you're saying and to the. the the other side of the media is going to be like, oh, that's so long ago. Let's just move past it. But yeah, we still celebrate Columbus Day. We still celebrate the fact that Abraham Lincoln fl- uh, freed the slaves. So if, if you want to highlight the good that you did hundreds of years ago, highlight yeah. the bad as well. Highlight them both. Don't, yeah. don't just tell me he only did this when we know that's not all he did. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Columbus Day got to go too. Right. Uh, 50 years from now, 50 years from now, when, when, when Lord willing, Donald Trump is off this earth, um, you know, we should speak on the fact that he was accused of molestation and he was accused of sexual assault. And we should That's talk cool. we should about all of that right now. Actually. Oh, <laughs> I, I, as you can see, I'm not letting that topic go. We're yeah, going to continue yeah. to talk about that. But yeah. I don't want to just hear that he was an American president. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, the, but that's how they're going to try to carry it, though. And that's my point. Don't 50 years from now, I don't want to have to tell my, my great grandchildren, oh, he was he wasn't just the president or the so-called yeah. president of this country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he, he had a lot of dirt under his fingernails too, and you need to he know. He was on the planes too. He was, a, he was on the flights. You I mean, I watched it. I watched the Epstein documentary and he was hanging yeah, out on the islands too. He was hanging yeah. out on the islands too, eh? So we we might have to say that one for another day. Let's not forget he Let's not forget he said on national TV that if his daughter wasn't his daughter, yeah, he try to do some things to her. He that did. Was, he did. That was Listen, I can't even talk about our creepy ass president any longer. I know we have so much <laughs> to still talk about, so we'll save that for next week. Um, but just to kind of wrap up, um, MLB still no word of no decision on whether or not the 2020 uh, season will you know start up. And We're not what's going to happen? So no decision. Because um, I wanted the Yankees. This day, this day, yeah, man. Like, now they throwing the Listen, I, I grew up. I grew up loving baseball. Um, baseball was my first love, and it's, it sucks that the players and the and the ownership and the league just can't come to terms. We're not getting a season this year. We're just too far in. They didn't even get started on spring training. So to even think that a season would start is it's unfortunate. It's not going to happen though. Yeah. yeah. And just to end on lighter news, I'm really excited about this one. So Jamie Foxx announces that he will be playing Mike Tyson in the upcoming biopic. And he even released a little snippet of of him getting his body together and how he sounds um, playing Mike Tyson. I'm very excited. I think Jamie Foxx is an outstanding actor. He's one of my favorites. Um, And so I'm excited to see the way this biopic will come out. Yeah, I think they're gonna kill it with this one. Like I said, uh, Jamie Foxx is one of the best uh, out right now, so I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Mike Tyson needed a movie like this. He does. I, yeah. I agree. When it comes to biopics, uh, Jamie Foxx is on a short list of actors who could really pull it off. He was great in a supporting role right. on and Ali. He was great as Ray Charles. Yeah. I think he's gonna be amazing as Mike Tyson. 
Yep. He's been, he been doing the voice for years, so. Yeah. Yep, he has. All right, guys. So thank you so much for everyone who joined in today. We, we really dug deep. <laughs> so we'll have more for you next week. Again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, especially um, the one on the show, girl dad, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, I'm Emerald Marie. And you guys can say bye yourself. We are out of here. Legend of Two Ooh. Games, we out of here. Peace. Uh-huh. This is real fans, real talk. talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. We the illest of course. Real fans, real talk. We the illest of course. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. Reporting live from the cam. High in demand. So please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot. So put a tie on your plans. All court. Talk of sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo, streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so we no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought.